sido. All right. Thank you so much. It's not even funny how much I thank you like for joining us today. I really appreciate you. Like on a scale of one to 10, if appreciation was a thing, All right. being 11.2. And I'm so grateful. <laughs> I, I am beyond blessed that you are my guest today. You don't even understand why. And I'm actually going to tell you, I'm going to like, I wrote a poem. Okay. Oh. So, no, so I didn't. Honored. no, I didn't. I didn't write a poem, but I'm just, I'm just really wanting you to know how deeply I care about you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I want to welcome everyone to this live. This is going to be the most amazing time you've ever experienced in your life. I'm here with Cami Guider today, and we have all the things to talk about. Cami, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm actually really honored to be here. I'm really excited. Um, totally admire you totally honored to be like in a series with damon young like i feel totally out of my league sometimes i was like i you know what is interesting because i hate emails i hate emails i hate follow up with emails and so when um damon <laughs> emailed me today and was like you know when i said i was going to get back to you tomorrow and it was last week it really meant monday of this week <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't even be mad because as an artist and as a writer, like that's just where I fall in on the cracks sometimes. I'm just now responding, this is a true story, Cammy, to emails from 2019. <laughs> I had to apologize to some niggas. I'm like, my bad. I didn't see it. I, <laughs> I didn't see it. Well, to be to be fair, like I'm really bad at responding to emails. So sometimes I won't respond for like months years and then i'll be like oh man this is a really great idea like let me reach out to that person and i'm like oh but is it too late like i've waited a couple years <laughs> it's never too late and i think that you should just be honest and transparent and be like listen niggas I, it was my fault i didn't mean to not come i didn't mean to not respond to this shit. how you doing <laughs> I literally wrote back to five college students and I was like, I really hope you pass your paperwork. Then. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my anxiety. If you're doing your job as a college student, that means that you actually have a few people that you can contact because you assume one is not going to respond in a timely manner. That's valid. That's valid. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you today about so many things. You and I just had a brief check in session. This is totally off the fly. <laughs> Episode three. <laughs> I wanted to ask you how you doing. Um, when we talk about 2020, I'm gonna call this segment 2020 new COVID, who's this, right? And so like when we talk about, when we talk about the 2020 that you thought you was gonna have, like what does that look like for you? Yeah, I mean, COVID-19 like just threw everything off. But as my dad says though, like I'm blessed, I have a job. Um, I did get a reduction in my salary, but it reduced your salary. I mean, you know, I mean, I think more people should talk about their salary. What 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 kind of reduction are we talking about? Uh, twelve percent. So, 12%, my nigga, damn, you don't work no more. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and you know what happened? So, I'm working on finishing my apartment. I have talked about completing my apartment. I've actually heard about your apartment, but go ahead. <laughs> so, I've talked about completing my apartment since 2017. Um, which is when I got a one bedroom apartment for the first time. I was super excited. I had, I didn't want to stay in that one because it was too big. I had like issues. Um, so I moved into a different bedroom in my um, building. I love that one. It's front facing, it gets lots of bright light. So I was like, this is the one I'm going to finish my apartment. It's just going to be like my space. And then right. I bought the sofa a week before we had to start working from home and like three weeks before they were like, your salary is reduced by 12%. And I was like, we hate them. We hate them. Sofa. We hate them. I, You're like, I just bought a fucking sofa. Do you see this fabric that's woven? Is it, wait, is it velvet or is it woven? You remind me of a velvet bitch. I don't know. I, don't I was going to get a velvet one. I could not. I know you. I was going to, it was going to be pink velvet. It was going to be pink velvet and all the pink velvet sofas were coming out to like $3,000. I was like, I cannot afford this. So I ended up like, I swallowed my pride and I got a woven kind of cream colored sofa and it's fine. I love it. It's comfortable. You're like, it's fine. It's fine. 
it's fine. It's a good first official sofa that's not Ikea. And it has like pink pillows on it. It has a pink blanket on it. I was like, this will do until I can afford a pink sofa. <laughs> you know what? Your PayPal links is about is listed on the flyer. And if somebody could do me a favor, because I need someone else to do the labor. I'm sitting here monitoring things. If y'all could just literally copy and paste Cammy's um, PayPal, that would be great. I, it would be less labor on me. I mean, who am I? One of your friends got to be watching. Drop that PayPal link, Sid. Thank you. Right. But yeah, but uh, the COVID-19 <laughs> fucked up your salary. <laughs> they they fucked up my 401k too so your 401k so i heard i just i mean i just got approved for a 401k i've worked at this company for two years let's not talk about me and so i heard that like the i i mean sorry the government is making provisions that you can like keep on dabble in your 403k your 401k interesting well so i know my company they took away our matching for like the rest of the year so they're not matching anything. So I was like, oh, great. That's awesome. Um, and so people were complaining about that. And then they've also threw out there, they were like, maybe we might have to do um, unpaid leave. And so it seems like we're good for a while. Okay. Um, but still, I was like, this, this really, you know, messed it up. I wanted some more plants. Um, I, I, think I understand about the plants. I got problem i wanted more plants i saw this like gold acrylic shelf i wanted in my bedroom and i was like oh i could put the plants on there and now i'm like that's a wayfair don't you i i do i do <laughs> i was planning i have a blog and i was planning to reach out to people for like sponsorships and all that stuff and i'm like you now should. I feel we weird. gotta post your blog too a friend melissa it looks like you're on top of things, Miss Alyssa, Mal Alyssa Thank Malay. you, Melissa. I'm trying to monitor comments. I'm trying to look at your face. This is a great video podcast. Subscribe. <laughs> there is that. Um, so, okay. And I think about um, a lot of the conversations that some respectable Black folks is having around, you know, social responsibility. I don't know who these respectable Black folks are. <laughs> I don't talk to them. The Surgeon General is out here talking about, <laughs> okay, <laughs> the Surgeon General is out here talking about. He was saying, about. tell your pookie, or I, I might be like taking tw black Twitter. No, nah, I think Van mind. Jones said that shit. You are absolutely right. You ain't mincing words. God. <laughs> it's um, ridiculous. Yeah, I have no idea. Like, I'm, I'm a, like, there's no, um, I'm a, it can be yes. Uh, for both sides kind of person like there is no yes or no sometimes it's yes 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 like my opinion is like social distance if you, if you can a lot of people can't I'm not going to give Water, them any by problem the way. with it that's fine <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not going to give them any problem if they can't um you know there are people who can't social distance there are people who can there are people who like they I were a home girl that got six kids job. So and like, a husband. How the fuck is she social distancing? I mean, you know, people need to be realistic. So I'm like, yeah, like social distance if you can, but like for for real, like the way our society works, there are people who can't, and they and they are usually, you know, the people who are most at risk. Like you have the essential workers. I went to um, Rite Aid on Saturday, and you know, wait. Mm -hmm. You went out into the public sphere. I did. I did. I had to get Tell water. More. My, I had to get water for my plants because my plants are bougie. <laughs> okay. So they, they don't take faucet water. <laughs> they take bottled water. Um, so I went out and, you know, those people can't social distance. They can't, right. you know, they have to go to work every day. And what, something that bothers me is like people are calling them heroes. And like, I don't like that because like okay. they have to go to work like people are going to work not because they like a hero to me is someone that doesn't have to do anything and like if they don't do anything you know like it's not like bad so do them. you think that this is like capitalist propaganda like yeah. look at these heroes out here slaving away making yeah. this money they're essential y'all i mean i had my friend posted a link about how a lot of grocery workers are getting the coronavirus and like you know, I'm sure, I'm sure they would literally want to social distance if they could, but they need right. a paycheck. And right. so like, it is not, in my opinion, it, it's not, for me, it's not really honorable to call them a hero. 
I hate how like Google had a Google doodle with like um, playing an homage to them. And I was like, how about you give them money so they can social distance? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, there's so many people, like there's the whole celebrities clapping on their balconies, which is weird. And it's like, what are you, what are you really doing to help them? Like, I would rather you shut up and just give them money. Or like, well, why is it that people, when you tell people to shut up and just give money, they get so upset with you? Like, as if like there was another alternative. I, I don't know. Like I've seen people, um, you know, people do that whole, like, oh, well, like they're not obligated to donate. And I'm like, no, but like, they also don't have to be obnoxious either. Like right. you don't have to go out of your way. You know, there was, there was a live I saw on Twitter with like Justin Bieber and people go live on Twitter. No, I, I see things through to self. black Twitter. Um, <laughs> I, I see things through Twitter and various other um, variations of Twitter. And so it was like him and like Kylie Jenner or something. And he was like, it's not our fault that we're rich and we worked hard for this. I was like, gar, 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 gar. did you work hard, Justin Bieber? I mean, yeah, like you worked hard, Kylie Jenner. Like, come on. And so like, I'd rather people just shut up if you're not right. going to do anything that like actually helps those people, shut up. Just shut right. up. Like sit in your house, eat your food, watch your TV, but you don't need to like have these hot takes that are like not helpful. They're not, you know, they're not anything. No one asked for y'all opinion. I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are so many people who are currently fans of you if they weren't before. I mean, I personally oh. feel like everyone should be following you. Do not friend request Cami. And he doesn't like people. Um, so there's that. <laughs> I mean, I do, I do tell people just to steal my statuses if you like them. Like, I don't want to open it again. Like, I just want to, no, no, just steal it. Take it. Take all the responsibility from it. Take all the right. backlash from it. Cause let's talk about that. You right. know, you write something that goes viral, then you have people in your inbox being all nasty and mean. So tell me more about that. Cause I don't know about anything going viral. And so like, if something goes viral, like what is the social responsibility that you have as the person that made it go viral? So I had like years ago, it just came across my feed. I guess I made it like five, six years ago. Exactly. That was about, um, it was a meme about, uh, black lives matter and how people complain about like you know, they say, well, like, if Black Lives Matter, then why is ABC? And it was something about urban, urban crime. I don't remember the exact meme. Black on from. Black crime? It was like Black on Black crime. And then I was talking about organizations that actually work on crime that, uh, in urban areas. Right. And so that went, like, viral. Um, it got so many shares, like, people were sending me friend requests. They were like, you know, like trying to like talk about it. And so I remember I actually started getting like these very um, nasty messages and like, it was also on my personal blog page and people, right. white men, that's what white men. Were. I'm just saying. I am shocked. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, you know, we're, we're very antagonistic and like people don't talk about this, but it's a very stressful thing. Um, so like whenever, like, I don't want my stuff to go viral again, even if it's funny, even if it's like good nature. Is your page currently private? Um, my, my friend page is private. Okay. It is private. My blog I'm so is- glad I made it to the friends list. <laughs> I <laughs> well, I'm, very, I'm very, very particular about like who I accept. I have to have interactions with them. Like I have right. to know them, um, like somewhere, um, because I have to like, you know, the stuff I talk about, I've accept, I used to accept friend requests from everyone. And I stopped doing that because like a lot of people would like start to cause problems on my page because of what I've talked about. So like, my thing is like, I want a page, like every day I go out in the world, except for now, because we're social distancing, but usually every day I go out in the world. And I Bitch, you, you went to Walgreens the other day. I mean, <laughs> you're still out here. <laughs> I'm still, but I'm not dealing with people. I'm still I got you. I got you. normal introverted. Like I have to go out and buy crap. Um, but you know, every day I go out, uh, right. and every day black people go out and they deal with racism. Um, you know, some deal with sexism, some, some deal with, um, homophobia, transphobia, right. um, classism, all these different things. And like on my Facebook page, if I can create an ideal that I want to create, then I'm going to create it. Cause I have to go out and deal with that crap every single solitary day right so that's why i tell people just tell me about tighten it up like you know like keep it keep your like private thoughts like 
amongst people that are close to you and that will respect right. it. It's not about being in a vacuum chamber. It's about safety. And I'm so glad that woman told me that because it changed my life. And that yeah. just happened this evening. And that, that really is what it, it is. Like, I don't, you know, some people, some people are really, um, they're antagonistic in a way where they can't stop necessarily. Right. right. And so like, I've interacted with people like that in various places where like, it seems like they target you. Um, and I always say like, it seems like they have like an alert on for when you comment or when you post, cause is they're always Cammy there. Guiden? Cammy yeah. Guiden is posting. She's posting. That's honestly, that's what I envisioned some people were doing. Yeah. Like, oh, I got to be here to be a jackass. Like, right. so I just don't do that anymore. Like I do have more public facing um, pages for my blog, like my blog, Facebook page, my Instagram page, my Twitter page is definitely public. Like I have people argue, I don't talk about anything serious on Twitter. Like it's always. What do you talk about on Twitter? Um, so Are you right part now, of black Twitter? What is I, black Twitter? I'm not a card carrying member of black Twitter because I'm not funny. I, I, I can't, I can't get in. I can't, they're too, they're too funny. I can't get in. So I talk about 90 day fiance. That's like one of my, we're going to talk about 90 day fiance because that's actually my new obsession. I'm getting married in 90 days. So it's whatever. <laughs> it is a great show. It I, on the I, show. It's well, it's a great show from the perspective that like these people are terrible, but I love to watch them. <laughs> um, so I watch a lot of the Bravo shows too. Um, and that's weird. Like, it's very weird to watch the Bravo shows because um, the ones that don't have black people, you sit there and you're like, why don't these shows have black people? Mm -hmm. And so like Southern Charm is another one. They're in um, Charleston, South, South Carolina. I think it's South Carolina. South Carolina, yeah. And so I'm like, man, there are no black people on here. And you're like, I know. I don't there think there's any black people in Charleston. Like, <laughs> I don't, there, no, has there are a way. I just thought about it. Sorry, Tamika. <laughs> There, there has to be and I'm like man there's no black people on here and then you see like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills which has Garcelle uh coming on this season so okay. that's but I was like for like what how do you pronounce her last name is it Bouvos or Bouvets you know that's why I didn't pronounce it <laughs> <laughs> it was just me okay. so but she's she's on this season but it's like it's the first time a black person has come onto the show and it's like wow like that's kind of shocking because you know there are like black people there that would probably love to be on the show and it's such it's so weird like I have to like suppress that feeling when I watch these shows like another one is Shaws of Sunset and that, that one's really Shaws of Sunset Shaws of Sunset that sounds really eastern Indian to me it it so it is um <laughs> like uh, it is. They are Persian Iranian okay and so that one's weird because they like you know there's some black things they say and I'm like a lot of them don't really seem to like hang out with black people and you're like oh this is like appropriation but you're like it's theft it's theft it's and I'm theft. like ah oh, just suppress this keep watching it's good reality tv <laughs> um, so, so it's, it's a dynamic and then also insecure I've been it's back on my heart this is like the only show I've watched look how I'm looking at you <laughs> I need to know what is it possibly that Issa Rae has to say to us? Oh gosh. That she hasn't said already. That's, I don't wanna, that's my question. And I don't, you don't have to speak on behalf of Issa. I'm just asking. I don't want to ruin it. Well, first of all, I think she's teaching us to be patient because goodness. <gasps> okay. I don't think it's fair. I had to wait a year and a half. Um, it's, it's ridiculous. I totally forgot about it. And I have a poster on my wall. I, I, she made us wait. And I was like, listen, I want you to grow as like an actor and director, but I also want my show back. And I personally think that's the most important thing you could do right now. <laughs> so, like, it doesn't matter. Just give it back to us. <laughs> I want it back, but we get 10 episodes instead of eight this season. So okay. that's great. Um, what compared to previous seasons of Insecure, the whole, uh, Lawrence versus Daniel, the Issa and Molly dynamic, what do you feel that Issa can bring to, do you feel like this bitch has grown? And I guess this is the question I'm asking. I think, um, so I'm no spoilers, but I really think Issa and Molly's friendship will be tested. Um, if not, maybe potentially a dis disillusion of their friendship. Okay. Um, th I think that we're going to get a really friendship heavy season. I'm hoping to see more of like the four girls to see um, their dynamic as a whole. 
Uh, we have Kendola who's back. Um, she was in the end of last season. She helped with the like TV, not TV, the movie night they had on um, that Issa like is getting her help with setting up the block party. Got it, got it. Okay. I'm trying to remember the character, but I'll, I'm going to actually revisit. She, I haven't watched. Florence at the end, like they go on a date together at the very end of season three. Slut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it alone, girl. You done gave a nigga five years. I mean, I just... <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna see that, and I think I'm really excited for this season. Um, I'm already sick of Molly. Like Molly is just, I liked her in season one and two, and then she fell off. Season that is anti-black. <laughs> I just I'm I just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there. I just I can't. She's to start. She's starting. Maybe Issa and Molly are too toxic for each other. I'm just throw that out. Maybe. Can friends that have been friends for an extremely long time be toxic for one another? I think so. That's wild to me. I've never heard of such a thing. I've, I think so. I've I I I think their ability to grow is now on different trajectories, and I really think we're gonna see some form of struggle. Okay. And so some I'm people, I'm excited. Been- I also love that that um not actually this isn't really a spoiler because nothing happens with this character tell us all about it <laughs> there's tsa bay so hey, wait is this the dude from the cab because that's my bay no 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 that's not so nathan's not season one didn't have nathan i think nathan's gonna be back i've seen people upset about this but i think he'll he's gonna show up sometime during the season i'm ready um, for him to show up sometime during the season i'm ready for him to show up next sunday but they they gave Issa what seems to be like a fuck buddy that's just a fuck buddy which is great like because you, you saw like season two she had like some broken pussy i mean yeah and she had some iffy fuck buddies that it, it, you know, she was talking about her rotation. And I was like, I think the rotation is rotating you. Like you are not taking like, advantage of this like rotation. Haven't we all been there when the rotation is rotating us? Like, damn, yeah. how did I get caught up with this nigga again? <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited for this season. Like it comes at a perfect time too. And, you know, we're forced to be away and now I can devote like a lot of my mental thoughts to like what's going to happen. So, okay. So you're <laughs> dedicating this COVID 2019 season to 2020 insecure yeah thank I have you nothing better i just needed do. someone to say it <laughs> i mean i have nothing better to do i'm stuck in the house um yeah that's it i'm stuck in the house i'm working from home which you know i hate it this is the whole reason why i didn't develop any questions for us today <laughs> so because I was like, wow, working from home, they really want me to do my job. I like, so I'm an introvert by like nature. Um, mm-hmm. I do really well in like really small groups of like two or three. Okay. Uh, so, but I still need to be like out. I still need to see people. I still need to see life. So like, I still need to have a routine. And that's the hardest thing about this is like having that routine because goodness. I was thinking about bringing someone on to talk about a uh, quarantine routine. Yeah, it's hard. Is that too many teens hmm. involved in that sentence? Quarantine routine. Is that too many teens involved in that sentence? There's, I mean, it works. You can hashtag that quarantine routine. You're right. My person probably already came <laughs> up with it. I hate, and they're not doing anything with it. Um, so a lot of people have been commenting on your hair. Oh. And First the fuck of all, I love it. What is this? A two strand twist? No, it's a braid out. It's a braid it's out. It's a braid Boston. out. Mm-hmm. You pull it off so well each and every time. Oh, Can't thank you. Can't stand you. Can't stand you. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> so many people have commented that they love your hair. I wanted to talk to you because when I first met you, we're gonna talk about how we met because I want to see if you have the right answer. When I first met you. <laughs> You were part advocacy. I don't even know if you were an admin in the Black Feminist Theory Group, but you were also an admin. You were just so active there. You were also an admin in uh, the Natural Hair Group, which is one of the, it's like the largest natural hair group on Facebook with yeah. something to the tune of like over 290,000 members. And what was Ryan, that how many they have now? Goodness. Listen, I checked my stats yesterday. It's over 290,000. <laughs> Okay. So I wanted to talk to you about that time because 
I remember um, like when I first joined the nat the natural natural hair group versus what it is today. And I wanted to ask you from admin of I think 10 Facebook groups I admin right now to your experience, what what was the beginning like for you and how did it end? So um I'm gonna be vague in the ending because come on vague. <laughs> some stuff happened but i will say um i was in a group called um what was it called natural licious what was the original it wasn't a facebook group it was like a forum or something like that okay and so that's kind of where i first was when i went natural and i ended up leaving it like a year later a year and a half later i didn't like how the creator was kind of what ended up happening is the creator had an advertiser who like spammed the group Okay. Um, and so it wasn't and it was like it was like malicious malware spam um they were like hey join my sexy time group now <laughs> it just, 48 times <laughs> like you would go into the group and then it would like try to open a thing for like a little website for you and okay. so like she refused to take responsibility she was like well you can get a virus on facebook and i was like yeah you can but i wasn't on facebook when i got this so right. i left um and the moral of the story is when you don't own up to your crap sometimes you'll lose your forum and that's what ended up happening uh it got too big she wouldn't pay for it uh the forum was closed down right. um so after i left that i joined facebook groups and i was originally quiet at first like i remember i joined them but i didn't really engage and i can't remember if that was just the dynamic of facebook at the time right like I, I wasn't sure if like i don't remember if like facebook you couldn't interact in groups or like it was very limited but by the time i started interacting like you could comment on things you can make posts you can do them all that kind of stuff right so um so i started commenting and at the time i was working at a job i was an office administrator i just got my um graduate degree and so I was just like, you got a graduate degree. I have a graduate. It's in library. Black girl. Mm -hmm. It's in library science. It's not special. Don't go. You should meet Ola, library scientist. Not really sure if that's what they're certified in, but that bitch is a librarian. Uh, so let me tell you. <laughs> librarians are really great at researching. I will give them props. I'm in a couple library groups and like, they're really great at researching. They tend to be like towards the left um politically like and, and then they have like the driest humor and that's like a great combination of like everything funny like i go in that group and i just crack up all the time um but yeah so um so i was office administrator i was bored and so i would just comment in these facebook groups all the time right and so that's kind of how i got started and i remember people saying oh man you're annoying do you have anything to do and i'm like no literally i don't i'm bored so, so that's how I kind of got started in the groups. And then like, in a way it was like, I, I go back and forth on this. Um, Cause I'm like, man, I wish I didn't. But at the same time, it really helped me learn a lot um, politically, socially. Um, I remember the first time um, I heard about like Trayvon Martin and like um, police brutality, like in a very serious way. You heard about it in the natural hair group? Um, I heard about it. I remember first seeing the post in the natural okay. hair group and I, I was horrible. I remember thinking, well, let's, let's hear all the details first. Let's, you know, do all that. And it wasn't, I was in a hip hop group and, um, I remember someone put a post about, about Tamir Rice mm -hmm. and Tamir Rice was my, my wake up call. And I just remember feeling like horrible like i was like what can we do like they just killed a child right what can we do and like that really started this trajectory of like being more socially aware it really started me being aware of like racism um anti-blackness um my personal anti-blackness and so black people can experience anti-blackness and perpetuate it yep never yep. even knew that yeah i knew that because i perpetuate it Anyway. Um, I learned about um, sexism, uh, homophobia, transphobia, it, and it, it really kind of opened my mind and helped me see things for what they are, like classism. Um, I don't know if Melissa's still watching, but she's been really great in helping me understand some of this stuff, and the way she breaks things down is just amazing. Like, I, like, definitely someone I give props to as well. 
Um, so it really helped me understand that stuff. And as much as I like now despise natural hair groups, <laughs> you're like, I, I hate y'all. <laughs> I have to thank them for like helping okay. me become more aware at the end of the day. So, but yeah, I was an admin in the natural hair group. Um, some things happened. Uh, that group is so interesting. So, I've left, come back, left, come back. Like the funny thing is, so originally I was, um, I was removed from the group. So I, I they was ousted in, you. I'll fight them. <laughs> I was. I'll fight I was, them. I would get into it with people. I would just get into it with people, and I was mean. I'll, I'll totally own that. I was mean. I was nasty. That's how um, I met your ass. I was. Me I, know, me. <laughs> I know. I was trollish. Um, so I was like kicked out of the group and then somehow I got back in. I don't even remember how. Um, Somebody dropped you in, like, bring her back. Yeah. Next so, episode. So one, of, one of my friends got to be an admin and she added me back. And then somehow I ended up being an admin. Like they were looking for more admins and I was like, I can't do this. Like I've been a troll. And they were like, nah, go join, be an admin. And I was like, wow. And so... <laughs> So I was an admin. Um, like I said, some things happened. Um, there was essentially a rift between um, the newer admins and the former ones. Um, not the former. Was it was it because of social politics? Um, it was because of the group creator who was pretty much non-existent until she wanted to add commentary and. Okay. I, I've seen this happen in a few groups. I was in a, a black makeup group too. And I'm now friends with a, a few of the admins as well, former admins of that group. And I've picked up that it seems like people will create a group, they'll get a bunch of admins, those admins will help grow the group. And then like they come back and they're like, no, no, I don't like this. Or they, I need, or they start- I need those admins, nigga. Like I need them. And like, or they'll like, I've heard of like, sometimes the admins will take, you know, they'll take money, which is fine. But then like, if you're not doing anything and your admins are doing everything, you should at least give them something. Right. So, you know, it's interesting. Some Facebook dynamics. I left, I was an admin of another um, hair group. um, And this one was in, majority of the women were in Nigeria. Okay. Um, Don't know how I became an admin of that group either. Um, But I was looking for a husband, eh? Well, they, so that group is almost a million people. Really? It was almost a million people. Um, and I couldn't do it anymore because people were like crossing way too many boundaries. Okay. And so there were two, like people would always ask me for hair advice and I'd be like, Hey, I wrote this blog search for it. And they'd be like, no, I joined the group. You should help me now. And I was like, Whoa, right. Whoa, no. And then there was another instance where <laughs> This girl ended up uh, writing a dissertation about how much she hated me because- You wrote a dissertation about you? Oh yeah, this long dissertation about how much I suck. And I was like, girl, I'm not gonna fight fight you over I'll this. Fight her. She was like, she was like, well, why won't you fight me? All you're doing is reporting the post. I was like, yeah, I'm getting you points so that you can get your ass off Facebook. Right. And I was like, I'm not gonna play your game the way you're playing it. I know how the system works. So it, it was a mess. But now I don't, I'm not in them. I'm like really happy I'm not in them. I can go into groups when so I- So you're adminless. You're without an admin. <laughs> I'm without an admin. I only admin my own page and it's wonderful. I set the- Come on, personal responsibility. I set the tone. It is great. <laughs> I'm so happy. I go into groups when I want to now. I don't get any Facebook notifications that someone made a post or I'm being, re- someone's reporting mm-hmm. anything. It's great. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with me. So when you said that you don't give advice anymore, um, I remember when I first met you, you were one of those women who were doing this with their hair and like putting the conditioner on it. And I was trying to emulate it. And I was doing (laughs) this with my hair and my Bantu knots was horrible. And you were trying to help me. It was so bad. So why did you stop giving advice? I stopped giving advice. There's a few reasons, but I... The main reason is I feel like hair hair care is like a lot of things, you know, like it's it's right. not it's like if you want the results, you have to be patient and you have to kind of like wait for them. Like you can't grow like 10 inches of hair in two weeks. Like it just won't happen. 
And, and I remember everybody was asking you all the time, how can I get my hair as long as yours? You know, yeah. and it was like super annoying for me. It took like four years. Like that's how long, that's like how you wait four it years. Was like I need it done in two weeks. <laughs> and so, but like people, like I will help someone. I will like, I was helping people. I would like sit through them with it. And then I'd see someone come in and give like some like crappy advice or some like grow your hair super contrarian all yeah. a lot of times I saw it yeah take that person's advice because like that advice they offered was easier um they thought it was better because they implied that it would be faster and I was just like why am I devoting all this time to people if right. like they're not gonna at the end of the day they're gonna look for that you know the easiest and fastest way that they think they can take care of their hair so um I just, I don't bother with it anymore. I like to offer like generic advice. Um, my advice has also changed over the years. Um, I've become more, I know it's, it's weird. Um, I, I, I used to be very invested in like the really long wash days. And then I reached a point where like- You were super invested. For me, it was exhausting. I was like, I'm not doing this. And I, I actually exhausting. dreaded wash day. No, so that's, that's what I wanted to ask you. So how do you think that you and I met each other? Because we've been Facebook friends for quite some time. So honestly, I don't remember exactly. I just remember it was a natural hair group. That is literally all. <laughs> Let me tell you all about it. <laughs> so I recall there was a conversation that a woman, I don't know who she is, it doesn't matter, hmm. had posted. And she was trying to say that uh, colored, this was an actual disagreement. And this is how I met you that if you had color treated your hair she posted a picture of her hair uh. and it was color treated and you know she was like natural hair look 475 or whatever and she got a lot of reaction like a lot of heart and like reactions off of it but you know the og natural hair group admins came out and a lot of a lot of y'all was trolls back in the day and you were like let me tell you why it's not natural it's not natural hair because you change the genetic aesthetic of it. And, da, 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 and I was like, I want to be more like her because she just <laughs> whatever the fuck she wants to say, whether it's right or wrong. She's just real strong in this. And so I started like liking all your comments. And every single time a person, sorry, every single time a person would be like, for like, here comes Cami. Actually, like I was saying, up, Fred, <laughs> you would just repeat it like, there should have been a time that Facebook banned you for commenting so fucking much, but this never happened. You were the troll that I always wanted to be. And so I, I followed you. I, I, you were. I'm in, a, I'm in one natural hair group. I'm in a couple, but there's only one I comment on every so often. And sometimes I say, like, listen, I'm a reformed troll. You don't want to go back and forth with me because my goal is to make you block me. I don't care about anything else. I don't care this about what I- This is why I fell in love with you because I felt deep down inside that if I stayed friends with you for long enough, that you and I could get to a place of understanding. <laughs> and when I say understanding, I didn't give a fuck about your trolling status. I invited you to so many fucking Facebook groups so you and I could co-troll together. I don't know if you're- <laughs> know if you remember there was like this one group I forget what it was called but it was like a whole bunch of people from Louisiana and down south were in the group and I invited <laughs> you to the group and I was just like I'm so ready because this girl is talking about black feminist theory natural hair and these motherfuckers is not ready for her and sure we tore that group the fuck up like, I, you know? I don't remember this but people have done that and I used to join those types of groups before I remember I joined so my my favorite Facebook moment I joined a hotep group with some on other, purpose on purpose for with some other people and like we just like tore up that group and the funny thing is like we weren't the only trolls in there there were a lot of other people just in there like trolling mess you know like making jokes so I was removed from that group that's my favorite time in 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 those old days and when i say those old days you're talking about 2012 2013 yeah my favorite time is getting removed from groups with you and then i was creating like a group chat and discussing all the merits as to why we were so much better than everybody else <laughs> so, i just is. i remember this this hotep group i was removed because one of the black men in the group uh had convinced the admins that i was a member of cointel pro 
That sounded like some hotep ass shit too. They convinced them that I was trying to infiltrate the group to get information. And this group was- About all the black things that was in there? Well, first of all, the group was just a mess. So there was this one guy that was saying that like dog, the saliva of dogs is how like white people don't turn into zombies at night. And I was like- I believe that though. Oh, we're- <laughs> I was like, are we really in this group? There was another, there was a woman who was also trolling and she also got removed. Um, she made a post and she was like, why is it, do you think that black men in Africa have longer penises? And what? so like, she was clearly trolling, but of course, a lot of people didn't pick up on it. They started posting pictures of their penis. Like, <laughs> I think I remember one of these posts. Like that is why. Like, what what in the world is going on with this group? But I ended up getting removed for being a member of Cointel Pro, and it it's one of the funniest things to me. I was like, this is this is wild. And he he did accurately determine that I was the one reporting his posts to get him like. You're like, like you were right. I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm not a member of Cointel Pro. It's hilarious that you think that, but like, I'm the right. one causing the trouble here. <laughs> That is too wild. And so, yeah, I remember like even after like we got kicked out of that group, I got kicked. I'm going to tell the internet why I got kicked out of that group. I got kicked out of that group <clears throat> because um, I had sex with someone and um, the wet spot looked like Antarctica and I posted a photo of it. <laughs> gosh yeah so I, mean, I would have laughed honestly <clears throat> it I, was I, the funniest fucking thing and everyone's like and that's why you ain't ever gonna get no head i i would have i would have just laughed i find that stuff so funny um <laughs> i find that stuff so funny but like yeah and then and then i moved on i moved on when i like chilled out a bit i kind of like moved to twitter and then i like follow like various twitter groups so i follow like trans twitter and i pro i follow sex worker twitter and i follow right. like all different types of twitters now and i just learn and then use it when necessarily and i just want to say like a lot of the what you were saying about what you were learning from people like um melissa is that like i was learning from people like you and emmeline and leandra and i always tell leandra whenever i talk to her not always because like i don't want to be a Please stand. But I just remember that I met y'all at a very pivotal time in my life where I was getting divorced and, you know, I was like leaving the church and I was like, there's got to be something different. Like there's, there's got to be a reason why Trayvon Martin happened. There has to be a reason why queer rights happened. And I really credit black, other black femmes for politicizing me, you know? And so there is that. I wanted to talk to you about, like, that was my next segue is leaning into feminist ideology. What do you think is the difference between learning feminist ideology and dragging someone into it? Mm. Because you said that right now where you're at, you're like, I had to <clears throat> calm down. I've taken a few notches down and I've like learned that the way I respond to people may like be off-putting and like my message. It's not to me, I don't think you're tone policing yourself when I hear you say that because I've known you for quite some time. I think you're saying like the way that I was just like, I had yeah. no hold bar about it. When you know, at some point in your life, you weren't really the person who had the same ideology that you are now, that they have now. And so what, what advice can you give to people who are struggling um, with accepting feminist ideology? So I have, so the first thing I'll say, and I'll preface this with like everything, whenever I talk about something serious, I have like a three comment rule. And okay. that's if in three comments, if you're showing resistance, um, hostile resistance, I'll, I will drop out of the conversation. I'm not going to continue it anymore. Um, it's not healthy for me. If you're, if you're just trolling and messing with me, it's a waste of my time. If you're not right. getting it, it's a waste of my time. Um, so I have a three comment rule. Sometimes I'll break that when, you know, those well, are also my favorite times, but please take care of yourself going forward. But those are my favorite times when you break your <laughs> own three comments. Sometimes I'll break that when I start trolling. Um, but, or when I move from like one, trying to get you to understand it to being like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to troll you. Um, but I would say like sources matter and, and I will 
You know, I give a lot of sources when I'm talking seriously. Right. And that's something that's big to me um, because, you know, when that stuff is documented and people are talking about it, and they've been talking about it for years, that's something I see a lot. People think like a term was created in like 2019, 2020. And I'll be like, no, this term was created in the seventies. Here is like the original right. article where it came from. Right. That kind of helps people understand. And I think the other thing that's really big is like, one of the things that resonated with me was like, a lot of times I don't reach the people I'm talking to, but I reach the people that I don't see. And okay. so like, I think about that when I get frustrated, like, okay, you probably, you didn't help this person, but I guarantee you like put some nugget of information in someone else that was reading this. And that for me is very valuable, um, to just know that. And so that's the other thing. And I would say lastly, like when someone's being hostile, I don't, I give very little. And I think that's okay. really important because I used to be like very invested in we are like let me tell you why feminism is so important yeah and I would be super invested in that and like now I've like really pulled back because it caused a lot of like anxiety for me and I always felt like I had to always be online and I always had to respond to people and so like now I just, I'm just like if I see it and I feel like I should comment I'll comment but otherwise I don't um right and so like, give yourself that room to say, I don't have to comment today. Give yourself that room to say, this is too much labor for me. Um, because it is a lot of labor that I don't think people realize is like providing the sources. Like I now have like on my phone, it's interesting. I just have in my notes section, like links to like basic information. You're like, this is my answer across yeah. the board. And so it's just there. And like, I've had people say like, I don't think this is real or I don't believe this or it's written by like, some terrible person um but I just have them because I'm not gonna google every time because that's right okay that's I'm, a good idea I'm I want to repeat that if that's okay what what I hear you saying is that when you know you're about to get into a conversation with someone you just go to a document that you have on your phone or like a notepad and you copy and paste articles that you've saved concerning those topics so that way you're not doing you're not repeating your labor a lot of times I have found that I will go to a previous status, go, I'll search in the search bar and I'll be like, Dee Dee Delgado, fuck boys or whatever. And then I'll copy what I said about libertarians being the fuck boys of America, like, you know, and post it, boom, 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 like, you know? So um, I appreciate you saying that. That's a, I think that's a really good social justice. And I also have um, your Sean King post. I saved that on Facebook. You saved so my receipts post? I saved I the wish more post. people would. I because, really do. Because I'm not going to argue with people on that all the time anymore. Um, I'm just, I'm not. So I just linked I'm it. I'm really proud of that post because people that do not like me still got on that post. And I'm like, at the end of the day, we can all come together for the common good of destroying this man who's trying to build his career off the backs of Black femmes. I mean, I don't know. It's well, just me. Well, the thing is too, like, I just, you know, I think there's a difference between liking someone and knowing they're problematic and like not getting into those conversations versus like ignoring it altogether. Like I was talking about reality TV and seeing like the problematic issues of like, of like, you know, racist and anti-Black undertones in these shows. Um, right. And I acknowledge that, you know, I'm saying, okay, I see this and I'm suppressing it to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it for the entertainment value, but I know that something's wrong with it. And, right. and I will never get into a conversation and defend these people. If someone's like, oh, here's, here's why they're problematic. I will never do that because right. I know it. And I think a lot of people want to believe that Sean King is like valid and justified. And he himself has admitted that he is bad with money, you know, and whether he is an intentional grifter or he is. Uh, what does grifting mean? It's scam, scam, scam artist. I just gave you my Joanne the scammer face. <laughs> so whether he's like intentionally doing it or he's just like, someone who needs the attention and he gets overwhelmed each and every time. Like, I understand people um, want to support him, but he's shown you that he can't, he, you can't. And so like, I feel like acknowledging that and just like, if you want to share his stuff, great. Like, I won't do it. Um, I'm not going to get on someone's case for doing it, but like acknowledging that he's still problematic and not getting in those conversations to defend him are what you should prioritize when you see that someone's problematic, you know, like, 
people have their people have you know there are people who like Kanye West they'll always like Kanye West I don't I don't care I used to be a big Kanye West stan uh if he was redacted I wouldn't care um so uh but like if people are like yeah I like his music and I'm willing to like deal with that side of him um I'd be like cool at least you acknowledge what if he reinvented himself and came out with a new album entitled the artist formerly known as Jesus what if he turned into Amira Baraka? Like, I wouldn't care. That's cool. Uh, if he dumped Kim Kardashian and just like went the other yes, way. But again, like, what if he went back? I'm, I'm just saying, as someone, we all have a problematic friend. And Kanye West is my problematic friend. Um, because, <laughs> because I think about how far removed he is from uh, Black X, a murder to excellence. And I remember that song that he did with Jay-Z and how it was just so poignant. Like he was like, you know, he quoted the number of soldiers that died in Iraq, that died in Iraq. And he was like 375 died in just Chicago. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was just such a poignant. And I was like, this is the black leader that we need. I have a shirt that I borrowed from an ex called Kanye 2020. And I just sent it back to the dude. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like I just, but he's still my problematic friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, like people have, I'm trying to think of who I, I, I'm like, who's problematic that I, that I follow. Will you Smith. Your deepest, darkest secrets. I guess it would be Will Smith. And like, Will I'm Smith? Going... you think Will Smith is problematic? No, I don't. What makes Wayne Brady look like Marshall <laughs> Stone? No, I, so I, so I will acknowledge that his relationship with Jada, he definitely like, if you if you read about their early relationships and some of the dynamic they had he really kind of wanted his wife's career to like be suppressed and she, he wanted her to su- he wanted her to support him more got it so like if you like i'm willing to like granted like will smith is not problematic in the way that people think but like i don't talk about that like i've had people have those conversations and i'm just like i'm not gonna go on this post they're right i'm just not gonna do it <laughs> He's so spiritual. No, fuck Will Smith. And this is what you're essentially saying. It's fine. The whole thing is fine. I'll accept this. But I, I totally love, I'm a big Will Smith stan. Um, you know, if he's watching this, I would love to be a model in his like Bel Air athletics. Please and thank you. Yes. Um, come on. Claim that into the universe. So I know. Like, modeling. we're both from Philly, Will. Come on. We're both from Philly. You're from Philly on purpose? I am. You know, for the longest time, I used to say, and this was part of me, like, rationalizing my anti-Blackness and going through that. I used to say I was from Syracuse, New York, um, which I I'm, I was raised in Syracuse, New York for, like, 10 years. Um, I didn't know that. I live in upstate. Okay. I, I was raised in Syracuse, New York, and so I used to say that because I was like, oh, I sound more cultured. And, and now I'm like, oh, like, I love Syracuse. Like, I will always rep Syracuse. But, like, I'm from Philly. I love being from Philly, the dynamic of being from Philly. You know, my mom's side is all from Philly. Uh, my dad's side is from New York. Um, okay. I can't claim that though. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, I'm from Philly. So I, I love to own it now. I'm like Philly through and through. When you said that you wanted to model, it reminded me of a question that I wanted to ask you. So I know that you are a black yogi, which is sort of like saying like you are a black genie, right? <laughs> and that like there are three wishes to get out of you. Like one of the questions I have is what is this yoga sabbatical about? And like, what is black yogiism about? Yeah. Yogiism might not be a word, but it is today. So I'll just start with my sabbatical because that's the fastest one. But um. I, teaching yoga is a lot of work. Like, I don't think people realize it. I think people think you go in and you say some words and you go through some poses. No, it was a lot of work. So I was doing it, I think for like two years. Yes. I was teaching yoga or uh, maybe a year and a half. Um, And I was just exhausted going from one place to the other um, to teach and everything like that. And I also learned about myself. I am not the best trainer for other people. Um, I'm a perfectionist. So like people, and this happens, like people do the pose wrong and I'd be like, "Mm, they're not doing it. (laughs) It's bothering me. And 
<laughs> and so like I'd get annoyed and then like people would come in with socks and I'd be like oh gosh take those off I hate socks when people do yoga and I just realized it was not a good look and I was like how about I and I was also going through uh, I was having a Crohn's flare okay and I was so also you're living with Crohn's disease yep and I was undiagnosed okay. with celiac disease too so I was eating tons of wheat and didn't know it was causing issues And so I made the decision to like stop teaching and just to focus one on my own practice, but two on my own, like physical mental health. And so I stopped teaching and I'm on a sabbatical. I now, um, people can contact me to teach. Um, I do only take, um, a fee. I don't do it for free anymore just because it's a lot. Um, and labor. It is a lot of labor. Um, I don't have a car. So like I get around through the Metro, the bus, I walk. Um, So it's just a long time for me to get there. And like, I remember like- You were saying that it can take you sometimes like an hour to get there and an hour to get back. And there were sometimes- And you're not getting paid, you know? There were some times where like the cost of yoga would actually be more uh, or the the cost of traveling would be more than how much I would get from teaching yoga. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. And so like- I respected myself and said, you need to focus on other things. And so I took it out, but I will teach, um, for, for a price. Um, so there are people who teach for free, but, um, I can't do that for my own health, for my own happiness. Valid. When I teach yoga, I want to leave happy. And when I wasn't getting paid and, you know, I was putting that money in myself, I would come back miserable and I never wanted to feel that way. You want people to pour into you because that's a part of self-care. Like why should black femmes do yoga? Yeah. Um, so. Wow. Look at me coming up with my own question on purpose. I know. Um, so I think yoga is a really great way to give yourself time. Um, I don't want to promise things that a lot of people promise and it doesn't work like some people say oh it helps with like anxiety and depression and like Mm -hmm. you know it's good physically like screw all that stuff um it just gives you self give you gives yourself time for yourself and that's something a lot of people don't get especially black women we're like going to work we're taking care of our families we're you know um doing all this stuff and like my mom for example is someone who's like up at five in the morning and she goes to bed at like 11 o'clock at night and like I'm always like, do yoga or meditate or give yourself right. that time just for you where you can focus on yourself. And that's so important. That's so necessary for so many people to just like stop and take time out for themselves. Even now, like during self-quarantining, I, if I, if I can't do anything, I like meditate. And that's because like during the day I'm thinking about work or I'm thinking about eating or I'm thinking about my right. mom's asking me to take care of the dogs. And like, this is my time where like, I can just focus on how I'm feeling, how my body feels, how like mentally I feel emotionally. And I can just process through that. And so I think it's really important for black friends to give themselves that. And then I think, um, I know I've, we've been talking about, well, I've been posting that it'll be about like diversity, inclusion and yoga. Come on now. I want to introduce you to some Black femmes who are also trying to like uplift that work. So it is. Connect, connect. I have taken a lot of um, yoga classes in DC okay. and I will say only one um, is owned by a Black person. And I, I know of another that's owned by another Black person. Um, and the first time I took a yoga class with only black people with mostly black people, um, was Brandon Copeland's class, um, trap yoga. And it was the most empowering thing ever. It was so weird that I was in this class and it was like mostly black people. And like, I didn't have to think about, okay, is someone going to like, look at me strange? Is the teacher going to like assist me because they kind of think I'm a beginner or they don't, you know, they don't want to touch me or like, is my hair going to be a problem? That's something I don't, a lot of people think about. Like sometimes I'm worried like, oh man, is my hair weird to them? Does it feel weird to them? Are they going to like give me an assist? Are they going to do a Shavasana assist, which is when you're in corpse pose, they like sometimes massage your temples or like the back of your neck, which feels really great. Um, but I'm like, do they want to touch me? You know, like all those things. And so you start to feel self-conscious through yoga. I've, I've done yoga a couple of times and the yoga studio I go to coincidentally is black owned. 
-hmm. and black instructed. And so I think about just like being a fat femme body, I'm like weighing in at 270, right? And like being around all these slimmer bodies and just feeling like if I'm doing this pose as a modified pose, are other people looking at me? Like, you know, but I, I think what you said about carving out the time is like the perfect like exodus to that because it is the only 45 minutes that I feel like I have chosen yep. to do something where I'm thinking about my body and how I feel inside of it and like redirecting that energy, that negative self-talk to the thing that they tell you to, well, in my class, they tell us to like hone in on like what, what's coming up for you? Like, you know, and I'm like, what do you mean what's coming up for me? My back hurts. Okay. And so is there a way that you can move out of that pose and just shimmy and like, you know, lean into your back? And I'm just like, oh, okay, then that's what I need to do. Like, you know, so thank you. for sharing. Yeah. And that, that's the thing is like, it's giving yourself that time. And it's funny because in a way, like yoga is supposed to be like self-sacrifice and like, um, like humility and everything like that, because it's not like the the poses it's a whole like dynamic it's a whole lifestyle and and interestingly like in a way to practice yoga you do have to be selfish you have to give yourself that time and it's it's very interesting and and I tell people like give yourself that time and I understand like um being black and being um bigger and being gay and being trans like you can feel a certain way like going into that class and being like oh gosh like what am I doing I'm uncomfortable I don't want this person to touch me like for there's two things you have the space to not want to be touched and everyone's like very different about that um you can go up to the teacher at the beginning and say I don't want to be touched that's totally fine um and then you can you can like use your mat if you have to like go to the back where other people like I can I can guarantee you no one is looking at you I can tell you that with confidence like no one is looking at you no one's like the asshole look at me look at me but don't look at me (laughs) that is such a common thing people feel no one's looking at you they're in their own head um and so but if you feel like they might like go to the back go to a corner okay um like kind of try to separate yourself and then like be kind to yourself is like a big one like trust me a lot. First of all, a lot of people think people are looking at them. So you're not the only one that feels that way, but like, once you get on the mat and you're in that space, like just give yourself that ability to feel what you need to feel. Um, and that's very important. And another thing is I will say, um, every pose feels different in everyone's bodies, right? You will not like how I do a warrior two if you did the exact warrior two I did, that would feel completely different to you. Right. Um, and so understand that like, even if it doesn't look the way someone next to you is doing it, that's perfectly fine. It still feels good in your body. It should feel good in your body. Um, right. If it hurts, you're doing it wrong. Get out of the pose. Don't, don't do it again. Um, and, and yeah, like it feels different and that's okay. That's how it should feel. Like our bodies are all different. Our bodies look different. They feel different. Um, we process movement and pain and like all of that differently and that's why people are into different things at the end of the day like I've gravitated to yoga as opposed to running for a reason it doesn't feel the same running doesn't feel the same way as it does for my dad who was a collegiate runner um it feels very different so I don't do it um and at the same thing you know yoga doesn't feel the same like I hate running (laughs) I really do um he forced (laughs) me to do it for like years but anyways not years maybe like one season but you know, like it felt like years, <laughs> dad. Um, so it's important to like give yourself that space. And I'm also going to say it's important if you don't like yoga, there's two things about this also. If you don't like yoga, there's different types of yoga, first and foremost. Um, there's Ashtanga, which is um, kind of, it's not the original yoga, but it's kind of where a lot of forms of yoga are developed, especially like power yoga, rocket yoga. And it's a more intense form of yoga that requires a lot of um I don't want to say physical strength, but you do gain that a lot through Ashtanga yoga. Um, There's vinyasa, which connects the breath to movement. So that's kind of more that flowy style. Can I tell you that every time uh, my instructor says vinyasa, I get really aroused. Just like the word is arousing. I hate it that I feel (laughs) this way when she says vinyasa. And I'm like, bitch, I can lay down now. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you could lay down. You could. I tell people like vinyasa or take whatever you want vinyasa to mean. Um, if you want to go in child's pose, down dog, right. 
we don't have to go through that, but vinyasa's breath to movement. Um, there's Iyengar, which is more of the alignment in yoga. It's a more slower paced yoga. Uh, and then there's, there's like restorative. Um, there is um, yoga with props that some people like. And there's yin yoga, which is a very different form where like you hold the pose for, it's a lot slower. You hold the pose poses for like two to three minutes. Right. Um, okay. it's supposed to facilitate a myofascial release so like try different types of yoga that's first of all because you might you know if you're in a ashtanga class i i can say i teach more of an ashtanga style and people will come in my class like what in the world i didn't think yoga was this and so, right. <laughs> it's kind of funny but i'm like yeah there's different forms you don't have to take Do you my think class. that black people can culturally appropriate yoga that's a good question i always say yes um i think i think the way western style of yoga is taught is poses and yoga is a lifestyle right. and so the way we're taught it is very appropriative um i choose not to argue with certain cultures about this because it is from their culture i think there are African forms of yoga or some poses are developed from that. I'm not. Of like I've the, seen like the, com <clears throat> the comedic yoga and things right. like that. Right. And I'm not of the mindset that <coughs> I'm me. very against this concept of like black people saying that everything originates from Africa. So we can't appropriate anything. <laughs> I actually really hate that. <laughs> and so like, there are some elements of yoga that are very much um, more so Indian in nature, but I think the way we're taught yoga in the West is very appropriative. Um, I will say yoga kind of transformed my way of thinking about myself. Okay. And I did kind of interpret a lot of the lifestyle changes. And that's especially true of like, um, how I like stopped being a troll and started focusing on myself. And I will say there was also elements during this time that I was dealing with outside. I will say when I was trolling, I was in two relationships that I wasn't happy with. Okay. Um, which I think, I don't want to say caused me to lash out, but because I wasn't really happy, I was kind of lashing out in a way that was not productive. And I think yoga gave me this space to not be violent towards others in that way, but also not be violent to myself and be able to say, hey, I don't need to go through this. Um, Come on, growth. Like to be in a space where, I mean, like you said, you don't want to attribute it to yoga, but you're saying that I was unhappy. And so I would go on the internet and also like act out that unhappiness in really weird ways. Right. And, and like, at the end of the day, I'm looking at you like this bitch is so happy. She gets to say whatever that, but like people really don't know, you know? And so like, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I have no idea what vinyasa means after this entire conversation, but so, I still am sexually so aroused by vinyasa it. Vinyasa is a style of yoga. It connects breath to movement. Um, I think it means breath there's the Sanskrit word for it. But then also when someone says vinyasa, you go through that um, chaturanga up dog, down dog sequence mm -hmm. um, is usually what happens. I say um, vinyasa or your form of vinyasa. So like I give people the space to not even follow what I'm saying, because like I said, yoga is your time. If you right. have a yoga class and you're like, gosh, I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to sit on this mat. I would be like, yes do it that's what you should be doing that's what you feel that's what your body needs that was, that's what you mentally need so when i say vinyasa like if someone just wants to sit in child's pose for like that time do right. it if you want to go to down dog do it if you just like if you want like sometimes i just like i just like sit down <laughs> like if it's a really intense class and they're like vinyasa i'm like give me a minute let me sit down i'm gonna catch where's the hottest place you've ever done yoga at? like temperature wise um, I did yoga at core yoga, core power, core power, um, which is like one of those more like national yoga chains and they heat the room really hot. It was a lot. I, and you know, I, that was a noon class. So I left and I went to my job and thankfully at the time I was working at a place where like people would go work out and they'd come back right. sweaty and no one cared. But like, right. I was like, goodness gracious, I feel like I'm going to die in here. So, I went to Miami to go visit my friend Tamla. And um, no one told me how hot Miami was. And she signed me up for a self-care retreat for the entire week of my birthday. And on Sunday, I was due to fly back out on Monday. But on Sunday, we went to a yoga class 
and I thought the woman was white, but she was Cuban, but she was white because she's white. Right. And so there's that. And she was like, um, vinyasa and I didn't move out of the vinyasa pose because it was literally 90 degrees and I was judging people was it outside it was inside oh. they did not turn on the AC and they were judging people so why the fuck do they have towels on top like white bathing towels on top of their fucking yoga mats don't you know it's supposed to be skin to skin like how you felt about people with their socks on I was like are, are you silly like you know and it turned out that I needed a towel because the sweat had made a pool and I was smacking the mat with my skin and I don't want to talk about yoga anymore. <laughs> I will say a good yoga mat, um, there are towel yoga mats where you put down a towel and absorbs the moisture and um, there are towel, there are yoga mats that will kind of like absorb water too. I hated um, it every moment of it. I'm, I'm so yoga mat. I can go on about yoga mats. They're kind of funny. Um, first of all, yoga is kind of expensive. I'm not going to lie to anyone about this. It is people say it's so expensive. Why do you think that yoga is so expensive? Is it because of the cost of the training? Um, someone named Nikki D, I say someone named, like, I don't know her, um, wanted to let you know that there's a fund in Atlanta to assist with the cost of training. Oh so if, yeah. If anyone wanted to know about that, that would be awesome. great. Yeah. yeah. So we're, so yoga is expensive. So that's the thing is like, first of all, um, I'm just going to really shout out the Gaia app. I don't get paid for this. I need to like message them and say like, I need to promote like some sort of ambassadorship. Cause I keep talking about y'all. Um, Gaia is a really great app. They have yoga classes from really great yoga teachers. Faith, her name is Faith. It's not Faith Evans. Maybe it is. That's the music. Okay. There's a yoga teacher in DC. Um, she's the other one besides Brandon. She's black. She has a yoga studio. Her name is Faith. Um, so she actually teaches on that app, but it's a really great app to learn really basic yoga and advanced yoga as well. Um, mm -hmm. I do recommend people go to a class um, so that someone can like adjust you and get you into the posture. And like, it's really nice to get an adjustment so that you can change how the pose may feel in your body. Um, so I recommend classes, but classes are expensive. Um, I am in the DC area, so classes are really expensive. Right. Um, but if you can get a class, like try to go to a class, um, they are like, those classes are expensive. A really good yoga mat, I'll just say my yoga mat costs $180. Um, Ooh, I'm so glad I stole mine from Walmart. <laughs> Well, like it's a really great mat. It's non-slip. It's like really great. But that's another thing is like getting those really great mats are expensive. Like a good one that's not as expensive. Like I did get a mat that I really wanted. It has the markings for where your feet go and all that kind of stuff. Okay. But like a good one is like an eighty dollar one. Um, Gaim has one. G A I A M. Um, I think there's just like eighty ninety dollars, but that's still a cost. Um, and then teacher training is expensive. So I my teacher training was seventeen hundred dollars. Right. Um, that is on the low end. A lot of them are like two thousand, three thousand dollars. And this is another issue is like there's the, it's so difficult to um, become a yoga teacher. and to stay a yoga teacher because you need to also get there are a lot of classes I'm involved in in. Vinyasa. Yeah. Um, and there's continuing education credits. And like, I've always said, like the cost is like, I feel like every school should give some type of scholarship to someone in need because right. it is really difficult to get those. Like I'm, I'm like, I think about some of the people, like when I first started doing yoga and I had an Instagram account, um, I saw people having GoFundMes for yoga teacher training and I was like right. man why would you need to do that and then I saw the cost of them and I was like goodness you're like child <laughs> yeah yeah it, I'm it, like it, studying to become an herbalist and I one of the trainings I was like this oh my god mm -hmm. <laughs> this is it, literally so, like a college tuition it's like out of pocket too and it's right. hard for people to pay for that it's really hard for people to pay for that and then like I hate the um they're like oh we offer monthly payments or stuff and then like the cost actually goes up 10 percent or something like that and i'm like that's, that's capitalism fuck y'all oh um, <laughs> so it's really like not ideal and i wish more yoga um studios would be mindful of that um especially for black and brown people who are already right. like are coming with like so many um 
things against them that they may be uncomfortable with. Like my yoga teacher training had all white people. And so like, there were some things I, I couldn't really talk to them about, like right. as a black woman, like I didn't feel comfortable talking to them about things. Um, I had talked about Brandon before we had trap yoga. I remember, um, I actually, uh, was a teacher at his school for a little bit and I remember us talking and we had like a it was like a teacher dinner or something where all the teachers came out and he was like yeah you know as a black man I'm in these yoga classes like when I first started teaching there would be a lot of white women there and I weren't I wasn't comfortable touching them I would not touch them at all and that was like something I never thought about like that kind of dynamic where you're like I don't want them to be you know, misconstrued and that kind of um, white feminist violence against black men that can happen. And so it's really interesting. And like, it's really something I think people should be aware of. It's like, I've had issues with people stepping on my mat. I've had issues with people like getting right, sitting right in front of me um, when I've been at like um, trainings and that kind of stuff. Like I I remember I went to like this um, handstand thing and someone just like, we were sitting down very casually and someone just sat right, right in front of me. And I was like, I was looking around. I was like, is anyone else doing that? Oh no, she's, she's only doing that. And she's doing it to me. That's right. weird. Um, and you know, you, you have that moment where you stop and you try to think like, is, are they doing it because they're just doing it? Or is it, is it, is it cause I'm black? And I think, <laughs> no, it's cause you're black. Um, so just in case you didn't know, uh, I'm telling you. And I think about like the, the intention setting behind yoga and like the, the lie sometimes that yogis tell, tell us, right. Is that like, we are all sharing this one experience and I'm like, "Mm, there needs to be a conversation about like systemic racism and like what that looks like when we're sharing the experience. And so like, I'm so glad you're a black yogi. Thank you for being you. I want to tell you that Melissa like really is like, your ass right now and I appreciate her because she's helping me with my transition I wrote blog in capital letters with 15 exclamation points <laughs> my purple pen okay and then here comes Melissa Kemi's blog is www.probunny.com <laughs> and so what the fuck do you write about so I, I do want to say like I'm really appreciative of my friends who like promote me because I'm terrible at promoting myself we were um, talking about how terrible your self-promoting is. I'm really terrible. So if you if you are out at, with me and someone's like, man, I love your hair, I'll be like, thank you. And then like, <laughs> it'll be the perfect time for me to talk about my blog, but I won't. And people will be like, oh yeah, she's got a blog. And I'm like, oh yeah, I got that. I don't I don't want you to force you to go to it. You don't have to. Like, I'm so You're weird. Like, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so weird about it because I don't want to force people to like go to my blog. I just want right. to be like, oh, I got it. But you don't have to support me. And it's funny when you when you made those um, posters that you put up today. I contacted um, I contacted Melissa. I contacted Todd, who's T. Elliot, and then Skyla, who's Cinnamon Love, and she's funny. She's like, "That's a porn star's name." I was like, "Yeah, I know, it's fine." Um, and I was like, "Hey, just so you know, Dee Dee like used you as promotion." And and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's okay." But I felt so bad because I was like, "Oh man, I don't want you to support me if you're busy or you don't have to." <laughs> don't worry about it and it, it's, it's really funny because I'm really weird about that <laughs> and I have a difficult time like being like yeah I have these things going on and I'd love it if you could like watch it so it's funny I have a blog um yes come on blog writer I I have a blog the blog started out as about natural hair and just like little musings about food and health and fitness and it kind of turns I mean I write on it generally twice a month I try to okay. hit four times I fail um yes come on failures I I fail at it but that's okay I'm, I'm totally happy with it um so I write reviews and uh I just talk about life a little bit like there's some social justice kind of um posts that I have um mm-hmm. right now I think my post is on like lazy natural hair care I think that's the most recent one where I don't about- follow it now <laughs> I'm like goodness gracious like what what should I talk about I haven't taken care of my hair um do you so- recommend this sort of like messy ass pineapple knot as a protective style or no I'm just lazy I so protective I style technically a protective style is um a I'm style that said, protects the ends so <laughs> when your ends are out it's not a protective style but it could be a low manipulation style so okay. a low manipulation style is a style that you don't manipulate every day um people generally 
get the two confused. Um, essentially, both are beneficial. Um, low manip manipulation styles are great if you can get like second, third, fourth day hair. Right. Um, Come on, fourth day hair. I'm really working this. So it depends. Um, but yeah, like if it works, my I, I say if it works for you, it works. I have like, it's funny, like the blog, not many people like in the outside world uh, know about the blog, but they have pinned a lot of my pins on Pinterest. Okay. Um, so I have a pin on growing long natural hair that has like 50,000 pins. I want to like aloe vera juice. Come on going viral that you said you never wanted to do. <laughs> I don't mind going viral for that reason. Like people don't get on my case about stuff. Goodness. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I have that one. So like pinning and like creating um, like graphic design is kind of like. Okay the thing I do heavily. Um, I just got my blog redesigned, which cost me $60. Um, Etsy is a great place to find people to redesign your blog for cheap. Um, we need to repost your PayPal. <laughs> we need to get you your $60 back. Come on now. Um, so uh, my friend Princess, she has been really great at getting me to promote myself. Um, she has encouraged me to send out like pitches and stuff like that so i send them out i my goal was to send them out every week i will say i was doing okay ish i was sending out one a month okay. um and then you know coronavirus hit and now i'm like i'm like i don't want to hit anyone up for free products right now because i feel bad no you should ask everybody for free <laughs> products i i you know people do and this is the terrible thing is like some people are really good at this. I'm like, I don't want to offend you. I don't want to bother you. I just want to go under the radar. You like, want me to ask people for you? I swear to God, I'm going to share this tomorrow. And be like, Tobias is literally going to be on the show tomorrow. <laughs> but make sure these black hair companies, what is this? Company, the honey pot everybody just needs to see you send you free products that's it i i really i'm so bad at it i'm and then you know when i get one rejection i just i can't do it i like it takes me forever to like start it again i'm, 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 Zanetta. Like, I'm like can we find cami some free products please <laughs> like one rejection i'm like well i'm a failure i can't do this anymore <laughs> i should just get rid of my blog i should go into like a life of obscurity i can't i can't so I wanted to ask you about your parents. I, I titled this the segue from the parents to the baby. So you have a choice to talk about your parents first or the baby. Um, so I don't know anything about the baby. Uh, Great. I like the, Let's talk about your parents. I, <laughs> I like that one song he has, but that's pretty much it. Um, I love my parents. They're funny. Um, You're funny. I thank you Good for my parents. Um, <laughs> Um, so I'm very close with my mom and my dad, um, they're divorced, but that's okay. Um, I go to my mom's like almost, I've been, I've been at my mom's for like four weeks now, Okay. So like three weeks, but it felt like four weeks. You're like, I'd rather be quarantined with you, mom. I mean, I've been at my mom's. I mean, I will say like being quarantined at my dad's, I think I'd go crazy. Um, <laughs> I love my dad, but like, I, I can't stay at his house for too long. It's, it's just too much um Valid. so my mom has taken me to water the plants my my wonderful plants in my apartment 40 minutes away every weekend so far um we take the dogs with us so it's painful uh they, they don't listen um <laughs> but i take her out take her out to eat we got easter dinner yesterday that was monday yep yesterday i saw your photo i was so mad i was super mad at you because i was like what it, what kind of macaroni and cheese is just, I was tasting it through the photo because I spent Easter <laughs> by myself and I think I reheated some Chinese food from three days ago. So <laughs> all y'all posting your pictures, I guess my black ass. Well, so it's funny. Um, this restaurant is a restaurant near my apartment. It's okay. one of my favorites. It's called All Set. They specialize in New England cuisine. Um, their menu has changed right now just because of the coronavirus and, you know, seafood's expensive as fuck. So right um they are so they had an easter takeout and i was like well you know i can support them my mom was like yeah you're on your own for easter so i was like oh screw that we're gonna get some easter dinner so we got that it was actually really good um i can't eat because of celiac disease i couldn't eat the mac and right cheese. right um but she you can just it. send it to me it's fine <laughs> she said it was good she had the rolls <laughs> so she was really happy 
Um, we got a good meal out of it. I had leftovers today. I did give myself a little bit more mashed potatoes than hers since she got mac and cheese, but that's okay. Um, so I hang out with my mom a lot. I hang out with my dad a lot. Um, my dad's funny. Whenever, whenever I call him, um, <laughs> whenever I call him, it sounds like he's rush, rough, ruffling papers. I don't even know. He could be anywhere, but it's just like this ruffle of papers. And I'm like, I know you're in the car or like, you're just sitting down. Right. Right. Something. Um, but I love taking them to like, so they're like typical kind of like American black parents, like they like the American cuisine, you know, they can do like soul food, Italian, but like, once you start branching out beyond that, they're like, oh, we don't do sushi unless it's not sashimi. It's gotta be a California roll, boo. Yeah. So that's how, that's exactly how they are. Like Korean, Thai, like they're just like, oh. So I love taking them to those restaurants. I, t- I try to tell them, like, I'm trying to culture you so that you know the stuff is good and you'll go there. So I got my dad into, like, fried calamari. So he likes okay. As long as it's the rings. If it's, like, if it's, like. Yeah, if it's anything longer, no one's going to eat that. But the <laughs> rings, yeah, they have a great texture to them. I'll fuck with your dad on that. I will. <laughs> I love them. I, I can eat the rings. I can eat, um, I've had, like, Thai fried sushi, which is, like, it's not rings but it's like straight up and down it's, it's really that's good. sadistic <laughs> but I, I try to get them to eat it um I took my mom to get pho I took them to get bibibop bib, bibimbap however you pronounce it those the little things. the little the little pockets of meat mint tender morsels um they're like the Korean rice dishes so they have rice and then they have the and I haven't had it okay fried egg which is uh oh I love fried egg I know I'm gonna tell you something my my neighbor is um well one of my neighbors I live next door to a bunch of college kids is Malaysian American Mm. and you know we've been social distancing I think we reach out to each other because we feel isolated she lives in a house with a bunch of guys and it's just me and her so like she texts me and I've been texting her and then she was like do you eat ramen I was like of course. And then she was like, um, yeah, I'm going to make some homemade. Do you want some? I was like, Gosh. I've been eating out of the package this entire time. I would love some of your homemade. And then, so she came over and social distance left it on my doorstep. It was like, it's outside <laughs> whatever. Right? So I go get it. It was the most velvety Oh my gosh. I said, what is this? What is this butter? Is this sesame oil? She's like, yeah, it's sesame oil. Like, you know, it was just the most, it had eggs and caramelized onions and like the egg was like fried and thrown in there and then it softened and it was yeah. just, it broke my heart that I had to like stop eating it. And I just wanted to say thank you for introducing Ba to your parents because yeah. more of us I'm need to I'm trying to, to get them to eat ramen. Like I'm, I'll be like, do you want to get ramen? And they're like, what the package stuff? I'm like, okay, <laughs> stop, stop, no. No, I mean, I mean the authentic stuff. You're, you're getting wrong. Right, right, right. So like, it's very funny, but like, I'm like- Not I'm, oodles and noodles, dad. No, no, not that 25 cent stuff. You're getting like a good bowl of ramen. So I love like introducing them to like new stuff. I um took my dad to like an authentic, authentic Italian place. Like it's, so I love, my love language is like gifts. So like I gift my parents like, food and like little things like I bought my mom like these head wraps because she was like yes. head wraps and stuff so I got her that I bought my dad and my stepmom for Christmas a private chef they got like a private chef dinner so like I'm definitely one of those people that like showers who they love with gifts and stuff <laughs> do you love me oh my god <laughs> I have one more question for you I wanted to know what are your uno game rules there's house rules and then there's the rules on the package this is not for white consumption I want to know how much do you cheat how many reverses can you put down this is my friend Paul McFarland watching this is he you know I'm just gonna tag him I'm gonna tag him too okay Because here, because we have been arguing about this for way, way. I need to know. As soon as social distancing is over, me and my friend Shire, we're doing a game night. That's it. It's, I'm not, I'm not doing this. And I need to know what can I get away with? I want to know if I can put down 15 reverses. 
hold on, hold on. I'm tagging Paul. Okay. Um. So so Uno, right? Uno out, bitch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So me and my friend Paul have argued about this tons of times. Uno has a Twitter account. They have a Twitter account. They say their rules right there. They say what the rules are. No stacking. Stacking is not actually legal. And as far as I'm concerned, if you aren't playing the legal rules way, I don't need to play your house rules way. So if I palm some cards to win, it is what it is. Because we're not playing by the rules. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm a brick house. So I take my house wherever I go, and those are the house rules I live by. Is this the hill that you're willing to die on? I will die on this hill. I will take those rules out. I will say no stacking. We're not stacking. That is not allowed. I didn't expect this from you. I'm just going to be honest. I, 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 I will I, die when by... When I began control. knowing you, I said, this is a woman who will draw four wild, then plus two on me. That's not even the name of the card, but it's plus two. No, no, no. You You're playing by the rules out here? What? You're playing by the rules out here? Oh, I play by the rules. Uno has the rules. There's no confusion. <gasps> They've got the rules out there. I know how to play by the rules. If we're playing by the rules, that means we all have to play by the rules. House rules are just, you know what? If you want, listen, like I said, I'm a brick house. I take my house wherever I go. I'll play by my own house rules in your house. That's how it works. If I cheat to win, so be it. You just said it's house rules, so who cares? <laughs> Cheating by proxy is what you won't allow. <laughs> so if we if we want everyone to play fairly, then it's Uno rules. If you want whatever happens to happens, it's house rules. So that's how it works. Um, I don't know. I've cheated plenty of times when I played Scrabble with my family, and they never know. So <laughs> they only know when I tell them I cheated. And then otherwise they don't know. So, oh my God, folks, there you have it. We have had a wonderful time. I literally, I like, I'm not going to abuse you. I literally could not stop talking to you. So I had originally posted it for an hour and I was like, by the time I got off my little, you know, <laughs> precursory talk with you, I was like, oh no, we go in for the whole two. And so thank you so much for your time. I won't keep you. I appreciate you you helping me launch this podcast. I don't know what that means. Um, It was going to be called Quarantox, but white people just interrupted my entire life with their 200 likes. Uh, So there's that. And so I just want to tell you, I care about you. I'm so happy you were able to be here with me and that you were one of the first people to say yes. I like, as soon as I inboxed you, he was like, of course, when we doing it? Like, you know, so Thank you so much. And um, if there's anything I can ever do for you, please let me know. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I, I'm so honored you asked me. I honestly did not think anyone would. I don't know. I have imposter syndrome. So when you asked me, I was like, oh my God. No, you're the baddest bitch I know. I, I was like, I'm okay. Well, thank you, Edie. I feel important. So I'm very honored. I enjoyed this talk. It went by very quickly. Um, thank you, Melissa, Todd. Skyla, um, everyone who watched, shout out to Sean. He wants me to shout him out. That's my coworker. I miss my coworker, Sean. How you doing? Didi <laughs> Delgado loves you. Not really. But, so, um, <laughs> but thank you. This was great. I had fun. Thank you. I had fun too. And I hope that you have a good night. And I will be, I found a, a, a tutorial on my website about how to like list all of these things within the event calendar so people can go back to it. It'll be great. I appreciate you and I hope you have a good night, babes. Thank you. All right. Peace, y'all. Bye.